Welcome back. All right, so news of the day video for all you fine people for your Wednesday, April 27th. Uh, so, of course, this is going to be injury talk and this kind of thing because uh, we are getting up to the end of the season. So there's a lot of guys who are probably done for the year. Uh, but there are going to be teams holding guys out. And this is what I've been talking about where people are looking at the strength of schedule during the final week and saying, oh, they've got these teams. That's not going to be easy. Or vice versa, well, you're playing against those teams. That's going to be easy. Not necessarily. Not the last week of the season. So Miko Rontanen will return to the lineup tomorrow for the Colorado Avalanche. He's been dealing with an illness. He's missed four games, so they want to get him back and to you know, make sure he's, he's good to go and he's set for the playoffs. So that's good news for Colorado, who, of course, have lost four out of five. But last night's game against St. Louis, it felt like they really woke up. So be interesting to see how tomorrow works out for them. Uh, Nashville fans. I, I know Nashville fans are concerned with UC Soros. I don't have news that's necessarily going to make them less concerned. Uh, he will miss the final two games. They're calling it a lower body injury. Looked like his foot or leg, uh, which is lower body. So cool. All matches up. Uh, so they've called up Connor Ingram. Uh, so it'll be Riddick and Ingram then until the until the postseason. And so the question becomes one of, is Soros going to be ready for game one of the playoffs? I probably, I would think probably, because at this time of year, they are overly cautious. They just keep their eye on game one of the playoffs more than anything else. And I don't think they worry about seeding. And if you watch my video on playoff upsets, you'd understand why seeding isn't necessarily that important. But yeah, UC Saros uh, missing the final two games will make it difficult for them to stay ahead of Dallas. Uh, they're ahead of Dallas on the tiebreaker, so we'll see whether or not they stay there. Again, strength of schedule the last week of the season, I don't, I don't really pay attention to it because it, it doesn't, doesn't end up mattering a whole lot. Uh, interesting news with Boston. Ulmark will start tomorrow against Buffalo. Swayman gets the final start of the season against Toronto. There are a couple ways you can look at this. Ulmark is playing against his former teammates in Buffalo. Or, Swayman's playing against the better quality opponent in Toronto. So, if you want to look at it and say, so, is this an indicator that Swayman could be the starter in the playoffs? Just on the surface of it, I'm thinking, probably. Uh, there was a game earlier this year against Buffalo where I expected Olmark and we didn't see it. So, I yeah, I, I think they're leaning towards, I think they'd like Swayman to be the starter going into the playoffs. Olmark has been the better of the two goaltenders over the last six weeks, approximately. But I, I think they want to get Swayman going, and that last game against Toronto might be an indicator. Or, as I said, it's the final week of the season, so maybe you give Olmark one start, you give him the night off against uh, Toronto the next night, and then he's good to go for the playoffs, might be starting on Monday, uh, where they'd have their first game. So it'll be interesting to see who starts for Boston, because goaltending could make or break the team. Uh, the, the Boston fan base, of course, has never been shy about expressing displeasure with a goaltender. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if, now that Rask isn't there to face the wrath of Boston fans, if Swayman has a rough playoff, if Olmark has a rough playoff, do they then turn their ire against one of them? Uh, I would think they'd have a longer leash with Swayman than Olmark, because Swayman's younger and he's a rookie, but you just never know. Boston fans, you can never tell. Arizona, so uh, I'm wearing the Coyotes, the, the original Space Coyote, the green one. Uh, Setri will start for them against Dallas. If you're a Vegas fan and you're cursing about that idea, I don't necessarily blame you. That being said, Vimelka played last night uh, in their win over Minnesota. Setri's numbers have been miserable. He's 0-2-1 so far, uh, 822 save percentage. I just I look at his numbers and I think, you know what? Toronto, maybe they dodged the bullet because Shalgren's numbers have been good uh, since he came up and started playing for Toronto. And Setri just has not been, it's just, I, I don't see it. Uh, again, it's Arizona. Uh, maybe he's just having a, a, a rough time of it with Arizona. Maybe it's just, you know, not a large enough sample size to say. But uh, the, the one thing with Dallas, and I keep saying this, Dallas doesn't make anything easy. So I'm not expecting a 5-1 to one or 6-1 to one victory for, for the Dallas Stars tonight. I, I'm well aware of how things can turn out for Dallas. So we'll see with Setri and Net how that turns out. Uh, the uh, Stars will be starting Wedgwood tonight. So... It's two goaltenders playing tonight in a game that might decide the playoffs who were not on those teams six weeks ago. And they're the goalies that are going to maybe decide who does or doesn't get into the playoffs tonight. Or at least put off us finding out who gets into the playoffs beyond tonight. Uh, Kop Okaka will be returning to the lineup for the Rangers tonight. Cop uh, is not playing. He got hurt last night. Lower body injury. 
Panarin's out. It's being called precautionary. It's an upper body injury for him. So this is part of it too, where players who might usually play through certain ailments or maybe a nagging injury, now they're going to get rested. Uh, now teams are going to look and say, you know what? Uh, maybe maybe it's a shoulder, maybe it's a hip, maybe it's a knee. You know, whatever it is, they might say, you know what? Just take a couple of games off and rest up and then come back strong for game one because they don't want them playing through games that aren't important and and end up getting further injured or maybe they're they're not up to up to par when the playoffs roll around. So again, uh, the Rangers will tonight be without Panarin. That does affect their attack quite a bit. Uh, Florida, I think this is very similar. Uh, Lundell and Gudis, who both got hurt last night against Boston, uh, they're going to miss the final two games. So again, if they were games that were really important to Florida, you might be able to work one, the other, maybe both of them into the lineup. But as it stands, they're not important games to Florida. And so, yeah, you just let them rest. Uh, your your prime concern right now, if you're Florida, is getting out of the first round, going on a run, and proving that this season isn't just a fluke, and it's not just a really good long run. Because, again, if they lose in the first round, that will be out there of, well, they overachieved during the regular season, they're not built for the playoffs. Insert uh, numerous reasons here for why Florida falls out. And, and again, the East is stacked to the point where the four teams that lose out in the first round, be interesting to see what they do. Uh, Austin Matthews reached 60 goals last night. He is the first Toronto Maple Leaf to do so. Uh, he is the first in a long time to reach that mark uh, in the NHL. I believe Stamkos was the last one, right? Uh, Stamkos, Ovechkin have reached 60 goals. Now you got Matthews. It is a rarity. Now, it is possible if this new scoring renaissance we've entered uh, proves to be sustainable, that it goes into next year and beyond, it is possible that we'll see more guys getting 60 goals. But then Matthews had pushed 70. Uh, he is the best goal scorer in the National Hockey League right now. Uh, Ovechkin's fantastic. Yes, Ovechkin, 950 goal seasons, remarkable. But uh, Matthews is the guy right now. Uh, the NHLPA poll, which is always interesting to see how the NHLPA votes. They vote anonymously here. They have voted Crosby... Sid the Kid, as the most complete player in the National Hockey League. 29.5% of players have voted that. Uh, Barkov out of Florida, 20.5% voted for Barkov. And Bergeron, 19.5%. I went through the, the NHLPA uh, poll, and I'm going to link it in the description to this video, below the video there. Uh, and it is interesting to me that, that for best passer, they, they didn't have Huberto in the top four. Uh, and when it came to best stick handler, overwhelmingly, it was Patrick Kane. Uh, goaltender you want, if it's a Game 7 scenario, a one game, you know, you have to win it. A Vasilevsky won, although Carey Price was still number two in the voting. Um, and of course, Carey Price only played three games so far this year, and he's seeing a doctor about his knee, and we don't know what's going on there. But still, players think, hey, if it's a Game 7 situation, we'd want Carey back there. As I said, Vasilevsky won that, though, overall. And, yeah, there were some interesting ones. Uh, the fact, too, that Crosby's the most complete player, and yet when asked which skater would you want in a Game 7 situation, McDavid won that one overwhelmingly. So it is always interesting to see how the players vote because the players are on the ice. They are well aware of who's hard to play against, who's easy to play against. Like when it was said, you know, well, which player do you hate playing against but you love to have on your team? Marshawn was the winner there. So, again, I'll, I'll link it in the description. You guys can let me know your thoughts on, on the votes and, and on what the players had to say. But it's always kind of fun to see what the players think. And, I you know, I honestly would be in favor of the players being the ones that choose the award winners. I, I honestly would. Um, I, I know that it's the writers that decide a majority of awards. And then, of course, the Vezina, it's general managers that vote on that. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, Check out the NHLPA poll. As I said, it's always worthy of, of discussion. I'm not making a video specifically on that. I've done that in past years. This year, I don't feel like, you know, there's anything that's really significantly changed, uh, which is also a point of discussion. Do players just have this impression of who the best are, and so they, they vote for the same guys, or is this legitimately these are the best guys? There's a conversation to be had there as well. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding any of these items. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.